Okay, before we finish off sewing the flag, we pop back over to the ironing board briefly. And what we're going to do here, we, we finish hemming up our edges so they won't fray with the two folds, two, two stitches. Now we're back at the end here where we're going to be inserting our dowel. And we've closed up the ends of our loop and run a stitch down the end of the fold. Now we're going to fold it over one more time, just shy of the edge of the first fold. It's going to give us about a one inch fold. And I like to come over here with the iron just to give it a crisp edge. Makes it easy going through the sewing machine. Some pins don't hurt either. Now the reason I do the second fold, originally when I first started making flags, I would just do a single fold of the fabric, stitch it down, make my loop, insert the dowel. Uh, but I found with silks and a lot of other sheer fabrics, I went through them. I wore the fabric out from handling it, from playing with it. I know my playing style is a bit to blame there. Vigorous flagging will wear your flags out, obviously. But the second fold seems to extend the life a little farther. Silk, with the beautiful tie-dye you can do, it's unfortunate it doesn't last forever. And on the other hand, I do have some polyester flags that I've been flying for 15 some odd years and they're still going <laughs> almost to the end here. Take it back to the sewing machine now, running a stitch down the edge where just outside the pins, closing off the, the long end of the channel, leaving the ends open, which we will be inserting our dowel into once we're finished sewing. So one last hem to do, and we are ready to insert the dowel. Okay, we're back at the sewing machine with our crisp ironed edge here. And we're going to go with a little bit of a zigzag to start off our stitch and reverse. And now we go back to the straight stitch. I do that to, for my tie off. I'm not a seamstress by any means, but this works for me. Zigzag again to tie it off. Reverse. Forward zigzag. Reverse. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and cut off the edge. And there we go. Our channel is closed. Down the long end. We're still open where we're going to insert our dowel and attach. Nice hemmed edges that will not fray, leading down to the flowing end, which is the end of the bolt, will, which won't fray on its own and saving us from that stitch. So now let's go insert a dowel. Now these are the dowels that we'll be inserting into the flags. They're 5 16th 
diameter wooden, hard wooden dowels. They're about 48 inches in length. And one of the things I do when I'm purchasing them at Home Depot or the hardware store is I'll take them out of the slot and I will lay them on the floor and roll them gently to see how warped they are. Because I find some of the ones they have in the slots are incredibly bowed and they don't look well when I insert them in my flag. So I give them a little roll. These are about as, as warped as I will prefer to buy them. If you can find them straighter, the better. But uh, that's a good tip to know when you're purchasing your dowel. Okay, so now we're ready to insert the dowel into the flag. But before we do, though, the finished flag where the dowel is going to go into is finished length is approximately 38 inches long. The dowels are about 48 inches long. So what I do first is give myself an estimate on how small I want to size down the dowel, depending on how much of a handle I want to give it on the end I hold it, to how much of a tip I need to give out to tape it off. Usually I give approximately about a half inch or so on that end. So engaging it to there, I always just eye it. This is where the wire nips come in handy. And I like to use the curved end down because it kind of rounds off the tip of the cut. And once I mark off my point here, I don't need the flag, I'll work it from a couple different angles lightly, squeezing tighter as I go, and it compacts the wood down and when it finally snips off, it, it's kind of got a nice rounded edge. And then I just use the nips to round it off the edge there. And then that will be covered with tape. So now we have the dowel size down for the flag. And uh, this is where the strapping tape comes in handy. I like to use the strapping tape. This is the same tape I reinforce my fan ribs with. I like to use it on the dowels because if they fracture with the wood grain and the splinter happens, uh, um, the tape is able to hold it together. I've had some that become incredibly flexible and still maintain together broken. Um, and it extends the life of the dowel. Anyway, so I started on the one end of the dowel and work it at at an angle, spiraling it around the dowel as I go down. And you don't have to be perfect about this. I try to make sure I cover every inch of the dowel with the tape, but I don't try to perfectly space it. I don't worry about little ridges or bumps. Anything that gives you a little more grip. scissors and trim it off. And then we have our dowel reinforced with the, the strapping tape. Now we'll take our flag, take it by the end that we've sewn our loop into, our channel, and we're going to insert it right in the end. that with my pattern I decided where I want to hold my hand with the solid red down towards my body. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a hilt there and bring it to just that end on the edge. And this is where the painter's blue tape comes in handy. What's nice about this is it has a good solid hold, but it has a low tack adhesive that doesn't really bond permanently with the, the silk. So when dowels do break, it makes it easy to remove them from the, the flag and replace them, which I do on a basis. And just spiral a little bit of it around and cap it off.
and rub it good down good onto the fabric to make sure you have a good hold. And come down to the hilt in and we'll repeat the same process. Make sure your flag's not twisted on the dowel before you tape it down. And then I give it a slight pull tightly and then start the tape onto the flag and onto halfway on the flag, halfway on the dowel, around once and then begin your angle to the end. And then you have flag ready for dancing. Uh, one of the reasons that I leave the tip out on the end, and sometimes I don't do it quite that long, I came out a little long there, I guess, um, is we, we used to sew it in, but from the playing, the flag with the silk would rip and the dowel would protrude out and screw you up there. I found uh, it just worked better to tape it off on the end. I can even you know, tap this end against the ground and still not tear through the fabric. But there you go.